I'm Roberta. And I'm Duke. And after two years bringing this sailboat that was neglected for over 22 years back to life, it's finally time to start exploring. But before that, we still need to finish some much needed boat work. So don't forget to subscribe and to join us every Sunday for a new episode. After over two years taking a lot of care, we finally got COVID. It's been five days that we don't really do anything. anything. We still don't feel like working, but today I'm gonna start working. We still need to do a lot of stuff inside the boat. Oh, we have good news also. So I don't know if you remember, but a few days ago, we bought this folding bike. But one bike is not enough for two people, right? We bought the second one. So now we have two folding bikes and that's gonna be awesome in the future when we want to go out and explore, but not yet because we need to get better from COVID first. So now let's just put this beast inside and try to install in place. Well, if you still don't know what this is, you might be new to our channel. So I'm gonna try to cut the story short. Last year we broke our quadrant and the reason it happened was the installation of our autopilot. To fix this, we reinforced the quadrant. And also we created a new autopilot support trying to get as close as we could to the proper position on the quadrant. So now the system is really strong. But of course, there is always a weak link. Now the weak link is the bulkhead where the autopilot is bolted. And of course this is the part that will fail soon if we don't do anything about it. So we decided to create a new support for the autopilot. And now it's also gonna be connected to the hull of the boat instead of just on the wooden bulkhead. Yeah, we know. Now the weak link is gonna be the autopilot itself. The problem is that our autopilot is supposed to be installed with 25 centimeters in between the autopilot pin and the rudder shaft. But due to the size of the quadrant, the closest we could get was 21 centimeters. So the entire system is working overloaded. To solve this last problem, we ordered a new autopilot drive that's supposed to be installed 21 centimeters from the rudder shaft, and the weak link is gonna become the easiest and cheapest part to replace the autopilot pin. And even though our old autopilot is not the perfect solution, we will keep it as an emergency unit. But let's finish the installation of the support first and we are going to talk about the new drive once it arrives. It's going to be so much stronger than before. Let's see if all the holes for the boats are going to match. We already did the holes for the new autopilot. Slow down, you just have COVID. We're going to still use the old autopilot that we have and when it arrives we just take it out bolt the next one in this right place and save the old one as a spare so we're gonna have two autopilots that's good for safety now i just need to tie these bolts up and check the autopilot and see if the angle on the quadrant is good i guess that means we have an autopilot in place that's so good of course i'm gonna take the bolts out i'm gonna apply some thread locks just to guarantee it won't lose it up with time. I think we're good to go. This is one last project. Now all I need to do is to create the new lines, the new cables for the steering system. But I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow because today is enough for the first day of work. As we had a beautiful sunny day, we decided to finish some painting jobs. The first one was to paint the surface for the new skid we are gonna have on our deck, and also to prep some spots for deck protections. With the deck job paint done, we started working on the finishings of our bow seat. And the first step for that was to apply a polyurethane finishing. It's funny how there's always something else. The support for the autopilot is perfect, but I just realized that this is too low with the new support for the autopilot. That means we need to somehow cut this. So basically, right now, the autopilot is installed here, right? I want the center of this support for the autopilot to be here instead. I think it's gonna be good because once we 
put the autopilot higher, that means we have less leverage and that means less momentum and less chance of braking. I think it's going to be really good actually. That's awesome news. Yeah, I mean, it's bad news because yeah, we have something else we need to do, but it's also good news because the system is going to be even better. I think that's awesome. That's pretty cool. The Dyneema line for the steering cable. Just so you understand, this is a 6mm Dyneema line. We used to have 6mm stainless steel wire. The wire that we had used to hold 2000 kilograms. This holds approximately 4000 kilograms, twice as much as before. But I did the splicing and guess what? I think it's a little bit too thick. It's gonna touch a little bit too much the, the sides of the groove. I'm not really sure if I wanna use the splicing anymore. So we came up with a second solution that would be to create a knot. It's a permanent knot. Everyone says it's really strong and I talked to my other YouTube channel that's my knot guru and he said this knot is good and he even said that he wouldn't use Dyneema, he would use Vect but I didn't find in Brazil he said he could order from in the US and cheap it's gonna take too long so we're gonna use Dyneema we have two ends of the line so one end is this bolt that bolts to the quadrant and the other end is the chain that goes to the wheel on this piece we're gonna do a knot but for this part we could have a shackle directly to here and connect to a splice or with the knot I think a good point of having the shackle is that we can disassemble this much much easier we need a solution that we can take the line without taking the blocks out i just found out yeah i just got the answer <laughs> if i have <laughs> it's true i just got the answer you see this is live this is like i'm recording live so if i have a knot the knot will probably won't go through the block anyways if i have a splice on the other hand this can go through the block and if i have this shackle in the end that means i can take the shackle and i can go through the block the only thing i don't like about that is that this small part wouldn't be protected because it's just the core that's just a dyneema core things fine to not be protected is a area without sun so there is no uv damage so it would be fine because we found something that's really cool we bought this from someone online that I have no idea why he have this because he sells every single I don't know he even sells like cell phone cables and he had this amazing 100% Dyneema cover to protect the line so this is without the cover and this is with the cover this thin tiny little cover holds 800 kilograms so I think I just got to the point that I know the project cover all the way to this piece colored not here and on the other side we are gonna do the cover until the beginning of the splice I can just get the needle and you know do the finishing and then to a shackle we come to the chain so let's get to work I have two bad news the first one is that the cover once it starts getting long it's so hard to go all the way i've been working really hard i squeeze a lot and i put in then like one millimeter the second bad news is i realized that when you do this the line that was long it shrinks because we increase the diameter that means the length and i'm not sure if i'm gonna have enough for both sides I'm gonna keep going and maybe if we can find to buy, I'm not sure if we can find, this was like a, how we call in Brazil a white fly, something that you never see while we were working inside the boat, the guys were working outside, so we need to go outside to check what they did. Now I'm talking, you remember the bimini how it used to be like, oh like flapping around, so much more tight. Progress. Let's see if this works. What I'm gonna do now is to pre-tension the line I just created because we have a splice on the other end and the splice takes a little bit of force to, you know, to stretch and stop stretching. So what I'm gonna do is I put the end of the line on the feet of the mast and now I'm gonna attach this line here so I can use the winch and I'm gonna... <laughs> That's really tight. I'm gonna leave like this for a little while just to make sure we stretch as much as we can the splice and hopefully it won't stretch anymore. I've never seen one that strong actually. Well, kind of bad news, the cover wasn't enough. I still have a little piece without cover, but that's just the way it is. This line is gonna have cover until one point and then it's gonna be just the core, but the core can hold four tons. 
So this core is more than enough. But now I'm gonna do something else because I'm tired of that and my hands are all sore. It's tough to put this cover in place. There is an old project, I think you guys remember, the dinghy locking mechanism. I don't know if you remember, but this is BS. Yeah, I didn't do it properly because we didn't have a way of compressing the terminal. And now I'm gonna change that. Until now, it was pretty much a fake locking mechanism. It was not pressed right, but the welder that we've been working with let me borrow his tools. Now we can properly build this locking mechanism. So tight, and now I'm just gonna cover again with auto fusion tape just to make sure we protect the steel because this is not stainless steel, this is galvanized steel. I could not find stainless steel, but I think it's enough. I just need to do another three of these because I need the wire for the boat and the wire for the outboard. Good morning! So now that basically I have all the new connectors for the new fuse holder. Once again, if you are new here, you don't know what we are talking about. Last week we replaced the fuse box we had for this new one, that the wires are connected to the box using screws to hold the wires in place. So everything is ready, I just need to install these in place and to connect the wires and to put the fuse in place. I'm gonna do something first, I'm gonna cut and prepare the new wires for the new solar panels because I want to install this new solar panel controller in place to wait for the new solar panels that are gonna arrive I hope by the beginning of the week it's gonna be already on the Bimini. So let's do some wiring. All good? Yeah. I think so, right? Yeah. Please tell me so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think for today is a wrap on the solar panel project because we need to run the wire from here to the solar panels now, but you know, it's gonna be a lot of work and I'm enough work for today. But I'm gonna work on something else because it's enough work for this, but you know. I had an idea. No, 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 it's really important what I did. It was to transform the internet from 110 to 12 volts. I think the idea is good, but, but there's always a but. I think the autopilot is a little bit more because okay. if there is something wrong, you need to go back to the weather again. No, so no, 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 no. we can do it. We can do it. That's the pin that holds the autopilot on the quadrant. There is something we wanted to fix also. This boat is both this surface and the surface has an angle, and that means that the pin is not straight. So now, as you can tell, this surface has a four and a half degrees with this pin, and also it's a little bit shorter now. So one more project here is where I connect the chain from the wind vane to the chiller. I don't really like the way it's attached, so we build a new piece. I think this one is gonna be much safer and also the pin is not threaded. I think this solution is gonna be much better, so let's just put in place and check if it's already on the right size, if you need to fix anything. Perfect. It's time to see if this theoretical project is gonna work. Now I'm gonna reassemble the new steering cable to the chain and we're gonna put the chain in place in the steering wheel and see what happens.
So the knot we're gonna use here is called halyard hinge. And the reason we're gonna do this is because it gets tight and it won't get loose again. And after two hours, I guess, we are still working on that quadrant. <laughs> I think you're being kind. I think it's a lot more than two. This cannot be half perfect, it needs to be perfect. It's, you know, safety first. So I just put the tip of the boat in place. I turn with the wheel both sides, just, you know, give a stretch to the cable. And now I'm tensioning a little bit more because I want just enough slack, not for the line to, you know, get out of the groove and that's enough. So I'm just, you know, putting a little bit of tension to make sure it's stretch enough and then we're good to go. We have a wing for today. What did you do? We have solar panels back. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, as you guys know, we've been trying back and forth, series and parallel. Now we have three panels in series in the back, another three panels in series in the back, and then on the top of the Bimini that we're gonna install this week, we're gonna have two in parallel because of the shade of the main sail and of the boom. So basically, that's it. And now it's working here? Yeah. We are charging just enough for the use because the batteries are pretty much charged. So the last step to finish the bow seat before installing it was to apply a non-skid on it. And as we had some all grip left from when we painted our boat, we decided to use it. I really, really like the result. This might seem like a quick thing to do, but it took us <laughs> over a week because yeah. like one coat of paint, you send another coat of a different paint and another coat and another coat and then non-skid. And I think it's gonna be really good. We can now finally install in place and seed and you know, enjoy the dolphins, hopefully. <laughs> good job. Today we are continuing the work here on the quadrant. So Duke already put some tough gel between the autopilot and the little plate and also applied some tread locks on the treads. And now... Last but not least, just the installation of the wires and we're good to go. We have an autopilot, we have a quadrant, things are going to be really good. Good morning, a lot of things happening here today. So we are going to install... Our internet has two fonts. One is five volts, the other one is 24 volts. So we're gonna use these little things to convert them both to 12 volts. That means we can use internet without the inverter because the inverter uses a lot of energy and we every single time we need to use the internet, we need to start the inverter. So with that, internet on all the time. And what's this project? This is to close the engine room in between the engine room and the back of the uh, galley because all the noise come through the head and through the bottom of the freezer. So we're gonna isolate better the engine room today. Now the tricky thing is to put this in place. <laughs> Now all we need to do is to apply some tape just to do some finishings and you're good to go. We're gonna use this regular EVA to protect the deck. This is so much thicker and stronger. So it's gonna be really awesome. This is from our friend's bowl leftovers. And the bow seat's finally going to place. <laughs> that looks so awesome, actually. There's a lot of rust marks here, so I'm gonna clean this before putting the seat. Almost there. I'm 
just like that we have a seat back finally <laughs> that's so good but now i have no key for the outboard no. So the next step now is to transform all our internet in 12 volts. So right now we have Hobert making a lot of noise. <laughs> the way we have right now, this is just the Wi-Fi. So the Wi-Fi is 5 volts. And we also have this that is the antenna, the 4G antenna that we use that is 24 volts. So with this little box plus this little box, this is going to convert 5 volts into 12 volts. This one 24 into... 12 volts. In order to do that, we need to cut the wires. So right now we have no internet anymore. Ready to be installed. I think we can skip this part and just show you the full completed result. And after, I think, three hours? <laughs> that was supposed to be 15 minutes, but you know, happens. At least now it's really tight. All we need to do to start the internet is just... Yeah, it's here. <laughs> OLC, Hot Life Crafting. That's it. We have 12 volts internet. That's so good. Hey, thanks, me. So right now we are using steady 1.4 amps and if I turn on the internet we go to 1.6 amps that means 0.2 amps for the internet that's, that's great I mean. internet's gonna be on 24 7 now we have five days in the marina and we need to do as much as we can so you know today was a long day stay tuned because next Sunday we have a lot more refit to come and before we go we want to thank everyone that watches our video and a special thanks to Todd that made a donation through our PayPal and Jim welcome to our Patreon family